In this video, I'll be showing you around the ANA 777 in the brand new first class suite. I will also be showing you how to redeem this flight for a fraction of the cost using miles, even if you don't have a credit card. Before we get into it, let's get to the beginning and see how this story unfolded. Hey, what's going on? It's Manuel here. Welcome to Sydney. Welcome to the Park Hyatt. Today is a special day. I'm finally escaping Australia. I'm going back to Europe for a couple of months and of course we will be doing it in style. So today I'll be taking you from Sydney to Tokyo and on to London. Now the flight from Sydney to Tokyo will be on the ANA 787 business class. It will be nighttime flight so I'm going to show you a brief overview and then we'll skip straight to the ANA first class experience in the room it's called, in the room, the suites all the way to London, it's on the Boeing 777. Now, I'm super excited about this flight. I've had this one booked since March 2020. I was still hopeful back then. It's been, uh, it's been a year and eight months since I've flown outside of Australia slash New Zealand. So the only reason I'm allowed to leave Australia is because if you haven't noticed my accent, I'm not Australian. So. I can leave anytime I like and I have a special exemption to come back anytime I like. So, bit of a loophole, I'll probably explain to you guys how I'm getting back in in a few videos later on my return uh, journey, which will be a good one as well. So, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up for the uh, algorithm. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the video. Let's go! Welcome to Sydney Airport. Um, this is the most desolate place I've been to in a long time. There's nobody here. It's pretty much empty. All the shops are closed. All the lounges are closed. Nothing open. The only thing you can get is a vending machine. Get some water. After sitting around for hours, it was finally time to board. Finally boarding. I think there's about 10 people on this flight. A few people in business class. Should be uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, let's go check out a Business Class 787 to Panida. The a 787 has an efficient but slightly dated business class cabin. While it's nothing to get excited about, the seats are completely comfortable, especially for a nighttime flight. However, I'm not going to bore you with the details, so let's skip ahead for now. Good morning, just about to land into Tokyo. Very nice flight. Nighttime flights are nothing uh, exciting. Slept all the way. Got about six hours in Tokyo and then we're on to London first class. So let's skip to the lounge. After landing in Tokyo, I had yet another boring wait in the underwhelming ANA First Class Lounge. While the service was extremely attentive and the noodles completely on point, there was nothing about this lounge that got me excited. Especially for a seasoned flyer, it's pretty boring. After a refreshing shower, it was finally time to check out the ANA First Class Suite. Cheers and welcome aboard ANA, the suite first class. Mm. The ANA first class suite is a masterpiece of Japanese perfection. The cabin includes eight suites, all feature sliding doors and a subtle yet classy design palette. And of course, there are the 43 inch oversized HD monitors to keep you entertained. It's just too bad, entertainment selection on ANA is rather lacking. Not to worry though, the food and beverage menu are something else. Let's check those out after takeoff. Let me give you a little room tour, a sweet tour of my ANA first class suite. First impressions, amazing. Check out this TV. We just we just gotta appreciate it. It's bigger than what I got at home, I think. 40 something inches of HD quality screen. 
Then it's onto the controls. Oh, very sleek, very minimalist. I love it. Um, controls here, easy to operate, makes sense. Gonna be controlled there. Obviously, we have all the power supplies you might need to operate this seat. And as you can see, it is freaking huge. I mean, I can probably do push ups in here if I wanted to. And back onto the seat, we've got this little mirror here. Check out my. Uh, I put my makeup, make sure that everything is in, in place. See this thing? Whoa, cheeky mirror. Very important for a first class flyer. And then, of course, we have the sliding doors. Uh, once we take off, we'll be able to close these up for a complete privacy. Obviously, they're only this high. As you can see, so as you can see, there's some very nice detailing on those doors. It reminds me of a Romoa suitcase, actually. And then over here, what do we have here? Oh, storage compartment. Very nice. Oh, and then we have a huge table that will come towards us now. We've got the pajamas, slippers, and of course an amenity kit. We'll have to check that one out. It's by Glow Trotter. Very nice. And of course, some noise cancelling headphones. Anyway, let's get stuck into this flight. We have champagne, some beautiful food. Super excited about this one. Hope you enjoy. consists of a Japanese menu and a Western menu. Having heard good things about the Western menu, I opted for this choice. I'm not going to bore you with pages of menus, but I'll link them in the notes so you can check them out if you wish. The dining experience started off with the amuse bouche and of course a glass of Krug, followed by a salmon and caviar starter. I much prefer this over a traditional caviar session, which can get rather messy. For good measure, I had some green salad in between meals, followed by a Japanese corn soup, all very delicious. As for the main, I opted for the Japanese Wagyu. It was by far the best steak I've ever had on an airplane. It would even put many restaurants to shame. Before dessert, I decided to try a glass of the Dutch Blanc de Blanc 2014 to contrast the Krug, of course for review purposes. It's a perfect addition to the coconut ice cream dessert. And of course, for further review purposes, I also decided to try the cheese selection, which was also outstanding. After indulging in the Japanese hospitality, it was time for a nap. The crew has just made up my bed in the second seat across the aisle there. So um, I reckon let's go check that one out and see uh, what the bed situation in the AMA suite first class experience is like. The crew offered to make up my bed in the spare seat across the aisle, and who am I to refuse? Although the bed could do with a better quality mattress topper, it's extremely spacious and comfortable still. Zero complaints from my part. So I reckon in terms of wideness, this bed definitely beats Emirates, Etihad, pretty much all of them. This kind of re reminds me of Swiss Airlines, but it feels slightly wider, so I don't know. After a four hour nap, I decided it would be poor form not to try as much of the ANA first class menu as possible. I kicked things off with a matcha tea paired with some traditional Japanese candy. Before I figured out, the wise thing to do for me would be to try a sake tasting. Of course, the crew insisted I try the accompanying selection of Japanese snacks. And who am I to say no? So I just wanted to show you guys the ANA 
new business class, which is phenomenal. I think most cases, airlines would call this a first class product. So let me know in the comments, what do you reckon? Would you go for first class or would you just settle for business? Because this is, excuse my language, this is pretty fucking nice. Very spacious. The only, I guess, downside is the, the footwell. It's much smaller than first class. But in terms of size on the seat, it's just as wide, if not wider. And then the TV, of course, a little bit smaller, but you know, what can you, I mean, there's nothing to complain here. Nice little storage cabinets, power points. Super beautiful design. I just love this. Love how they finished it. Yeah, this is a quick sneak preview of their business class product. Let me know, what do you reckon? Would you go business or would you go first? After checking out the equally impressive business class cabin and a few more glasses of Krug, I was craving some Japanese noodles, which also passed a review with flying colors. Now, I quickly wanted to explain to you how I booked this flight and how you can do the same by using this very simple strategy. All you need to do is either buy life miles from Avianca or buy flying club miles from Virgin Atlantic. So at the moment you can buy Virgin Club miles with a 70% bonus. It means you can uh, book this flight for I think around a thousand dollars Australian considering that this flight costs $27,000 at retail. That's a bargain. So all you need to do is buy the miles that you need. For this flight you need 60,000 flying club miles or 110,000 life miles. Once you got those you just need to look for award space Call up the uh, booking center, book your flights with live miles. You can do it online, very easy. Lock it in, pay the taxes, tax is about $59. And then you get the same kind of experience as I'm enjoying now. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the uh, review. Hope you enjoyed a and a first class i think it was amazing crew were outstanding i love japanese hospitality so this has been a sensational flight so thank you for watching if you like to give it a thumbs up if you don't like it give it a thumbs down and uh, if you want to see more subscribe why not it's free a cheeky glass of hibiki 21 later we arrived in london on schedule and before i knew it the a and a first class experience was over I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching and see you next time!